it doesn't know where it's going. So last month, you might have noticed something. Google actually announced that they had mapped the exact location of every single residence and every single business in the entirety of France, every single house number in France. Now, if you were tasked with that job, what would you need? Maybe 100 people for a year? What did Google do? Google used an algorithm which did that entire process in one hour. They mapped every single residence and business exact location in one hour. How did they do it? Well, they started with Google Street View, which is hundreds of millions of images. And they used a machine learning algorithm. Machine learning algorithms are algorithms that you don't really program in the traditional sense. But you just give it a sense of what you're trying to do, and it figures it out. So in this case, they took a few hundred street numbers and kind of circled them and said to the algorithm, look for stuff like this and read them. And the algorithm did the rest. Very similar with this, with this project, looking for these uh, areas, these sort of green arrows, uh, are areas that are called mitosis. These are the most terrifying parts of a breast cancer tumor. These were hand marked up by a team of four expert pathologists working in unison. That's because actually doing this is very, very difficult. Two, any two pathologists on the team only agreed with each other 50% of the time. They then took this expert assessment for thousands of breast cancer images, and they sent it to a machine learning algorithm. The machine learning algorithm then automatically identified metosis in thousands more images, and it had a 60% overlap with the shared committee view. So in <coughs> other words, this algorithm is better than any expert pathologist in the world at identifying this incredibly difficult thing of ketosis. This is actually happening again and again. I was involved in a project a couple of years ago for Merck, and they wanted to know, can we find molecules ahead of time which are likely to be toxic? And you probably know the punchline. The team that I was involved with did not try and program that, but instead gave examples of a whole lot of toxic molecules to a machine learning algorithm. It took only two weeks for the whole project, and at the end of it was a system that was much better than Merck and much better than anybody in academia or industry had ever developed for identifying toxic molecules. I'll tell you something else. In each one of these systems, they were developed by people with no previous background in this area. So for example, this uh, and the Merck uh, example, both developed by machine learning experts who had no previous background in biology. And generally these things take days or maybe a couple of weeks. It's not just in medical and imaging areas. This is also being used in language. In fact, uh, on your Android phone, when you're using uh, voice recognition, it's using this kind of machine learning system. And in fact, I'll tell you something else. Not only are all these best-in-class algorithms using machine learning rather than traditional programming. They're using the exact same algorithm, one algorithm. It's called deep learning. And it's actually based on the computing process that the human brain uses. We're now at a point where the, the hardware, the computer hardware, can approximate that well enough that we are seeing the best-in-class performance. Um, other examples, the world's best algorithm for translating English speech into Mandarin speech in the original inflection of the original speaker's voice, again, is a deep learning algorithm. So we're at a point now where a single algorithm, which is actually getting multiplicatively better every year, the more data you give it, the more computing power you give it, the better it gets, is now at or better than human performance at the very things which humans spend most of their time doing. All the blue areas here are countries where over 80% of employment is in services. More specifically, for example, in the US, 65% of employment is actually in information processing. And this is the exact thing that these algorithms are now at, or better than human performance at, and getting multiplicatively better every year. So there are opportunities, for example, for your organizations. These same algorithms are actually also the best in the world at identifying churn, at credit scoring, at lead prioritization. You know, any of your organizations that, that use these approaches will get ahead. Those that don't will fall behind. 
So it has a big commercial opportunity as well. <coughs> but think about the other side. Every single organization which is doing this is actually replacing human jobs, the most common jobs, with machines. This has happened once before. In the Industrial Revolution, before that, most people were working in manufacturing and agriculture. Suddenly, those jobs didn't exist anymore because machines did it better. Did you know that for decades afterwards, 80% of workers were much worse off. In fact, 80% of workers did not have a basic living wage. Incredibly disruptive. What is this going to mean for us when all of the people who are currently in the services sector, or many of them, find themselves literally unable to add economic value because the computers are getting more applicatively better every year? So you might be thinking this is all very nice in theory, but you know, wouldn't you expect to have seen something in practice by now? Wouldn't you expect to have already seen that like, the, the value of human capital is not keeping up with the improvements in productivity? Well, yes you would. Uh, in fact, the value of human capital, as expressed in median income, has been flat for the last 15 years and is now starting to go down. At the very same time, that productivity overall in the economy has kept increasing and increasing. So what I wanted to tell you today is be aware of the exciting opportunities for all of your organizations from machine learning, but also be aware of the threats to our socioeconomic systems that will come in the future. And let's start to think about both the opportunities and the threats.